All right, what's up, Internet? Sinus Media here, and today we are returning to our simple square wave synthesizer that we are writing in Lua Protoplug. It's a VST which you can write your own code inside in your door. So here we are in FL Studio. This Lua Protoplug VST is just treated like any other VST in the system, but as you can see, it's got code and it gives us a little user interface like this. I'm not going to explain how this works. If you want to know how this works, I've got two previous videos on this and I recommend going and watching those. Every time I do one of these videos, I put the code on as a gist on GitHub so you can download it and play with it. And we're going to take the code that we developed in the last two tutorials and we're going to now going to add this a simple filter to it and protoplug comes with a filter as standard in its library so fortunately we don't have to actually do that ourselves i think that's available and it's probably coded in c so it's fast um, possibly it would be a little bit slow to implement a filter from scratch in lua i'm speculating here but let's have a listen to what we've got at the moment here's our current synth. I've made a simple sequence here. So that was the state of the synth as we left it at the end of the previous tutorial. Here is here's the, the new code we're looking at today which we've added the, the filter to. Uh, I've set it up initially to be the same, playing the same sequence. But you can see I've got two new parameters. The it's a low-pass filter. There's a cutoff and there's a resonance. So I'm going to take the resonance right down, and now just pull the cutoff down. That's gone away entirely. Put the resonance up a bit. So fairly simple low pass filter there and let's have a look at the code of how we did that. I'm not going to show you the code here because most of this code is the same as the previous one so I pulled up meld. This is a diffing tool in other words what it shows you is the difference between two files so I'm going to use this to highlight what is different about these the previous version of the code and the changes I've done to bring in this filter. So the first thing I've done is I've just included the library. Now, so I'm using require. Here's the path to that library. It's called filters. This is standard with protoplug. And so I've just, the interesting thing here is it's unlike some languages. When we require this module or, or component library, we assign it to an actual variable. I'm calling it make filter because what we're going to get is a a function or that constructs the filter for us and because we want this to be in scope everywhere in our plugin we make it local local here seems to be within the scope of the plugin so we just have to require that put it into a, the variable called make filter now this code for making an envelope that doesn't change the code for making an oscillator doesn't change now we get to the main part of our code and here if you remember the variables that contain the two oscillators the ratio between them the low frequency oscillator here the envelope for that controls the the, the volume envelope or amplitude envelope and here the pulse weight with the pulse width modulation envelope now 
at this point we're creating an actual instance of a filter I'm just calling it the filter it's also a, uh, a local variable and we simply call the make filter this thing that constructs it and we're passing it these arguments um, this table here of some arguments like the type the f the cutoff frequency the gain and the Q it's like the resonance we don't have to worry about this particularly because these are the defaults but almost immediately it's going to take the parameters in the user interface so this is the important part if you remember this part of the code here is where we actually generated the sound wave so we got our LFO value we got our pulse width value these two oscillators they had this method uh, uh, for setting the pulse width for the pulse width modulation then we call the next value on these two oscillators to actually get the next point the next sample point in our thing and we assign that to v1 v2 for the oscillator 2 then we simply summed them and halved the total so we basically added them mixed them together and then we did this calculation here to transform them according to the low frequency oscillator at this point we took the result of all of that that f vf here stood for v final and we simply now it wasn't really final because we then multiplied it by the value from the amplitude envelope to wrap the envelope around the final thing and then we put the the value into samples samples contain is the buffer that's going to be sent out it's got two channels, zero and one, left and right, and just at each point, we're filling the entire buffer within this loop between zero and S max, the maximum length of the buffer. If you don't understand this, go and watch the previous two videos because this is explained in much more detail there. So all we're doing differently this time is we've created this thing called the filter. And now, having done this part, uh, mixed the two oscillators and modulated them by the low frequency oscillator we now take that value and we process we ask the filter to process it so this is a library given to us we've already set this up at this point to be a low pass filter so all we have to do is ask the filter process the current value and it presumably knows how to process that appropriately based on the current sort of window of values as i understand the maths of this and i could be wrong at this point i think you don't calculate i think you don't calculate the a filtered version and just on a single sample point i think there's some fourier transformations going on there and it's using it has to see a window of some sort but i could be wrong about that we will look into that in a future video but we've now got a filtered value and again we take that filtered value and now we pass that again into our amplitude envelope at this point here and now that variable called filtered is what gets put into the samples buffer the audio buffer to go out so really that's the main difference we just had to import the library to do the filtering we set our filter up here the important thing here is the type this is a low pass filter as I say, the other values will get changed by the controls. And then at this point, we've kind of injected that into the chain of chain of generators and, and transformations between the modulated version of the signal and before the amplitude envelope. So that's it in terms of the audio processing. The final bit of difference of this code is we've added two new parameters the cutoff frequency this works exactly the same as all the other parameters except here we're passing a change to, to the filter object itself we're passing this change of the f value that's the cutoff fre frequency we're just defining the control itself to give that a max value of 20,000 or 20 kilohertz and the resonance here is between 0.1 and I think I set it up between max equals 30 that seemed to give me some thing 
and again update the Q. Q is the resonance. So that's it. Uh, this code is going to be available in the in the description, the link to it. Um, it's really we're not doing the the work here. We're just having to bring this filter in and set it up, put it in the right place in this. You know, you can kind of see this pipeline or this audio processing, yeah, pipeline here. We just have to put it, inject it into the part, into the place we want it. And it makes sense to put it after the modulation and before the amplitude envelope. And that's it. So we can experiment. We can now jam with it, put it into still play around with these other modulating And as always, we can set up, say, a let's put a, put a formula controller in here. I'm just going to put that cut off under the control of, let's say, a sawtooth wave. And we can now, if you remember the trick here, right here we go to browse the parameters. We find that LF LPF cutoff, link that to this controller, accept that, and now it's under the control.
hours of fun with our new filter empowered synthesizer okay that's it i said this year i'm going to keep them short i'm really going to try and keep them short so that's it for this one and we will continue adding new features to this synthesizer for another couple of videos i think because i thought of a couple more things that are important and so i'll see you then thanks for watching